Joining us now, the Secretary of State, Antony Blinken. Mr. Secretary, welcome back to Fox News Sunday. Thanks for having me, Chris. Let's get the latest on the evacuation effort. How many people have we evacuated from Kabul in the last 24 hours, in the last week since the Taliban took Kabul, and why did the administration decide to, to get U.S. airlines to participate in the evacuation? Uh, Chris, thanks very much. Last uh, 24 hours, about 8,000 people uh, on about 60 flights evacuated from Kabul airport. Uh, since this effort began uh, at the end of July, about 30,000 people all told on our military flights and on charter flights that we've helped uh, to organize and get out of, uh, out of the airport. Uh, we've now asked, uh, through authority that the president has, uh, airlines uh, to help participate in moving people not out of Kabul, but from these third country sites where we're taking them as we finish uh, processing them, going through security checks. We've reached agreements with about two dozen countries over four continents who are now helping or are soon going to help with the transit of, uh, of people out of Kabul. And this is one way to make sure we have enough um, flight capacity uh, to move people from those places to their, their ultimate destinations. Job one, of course, is getting Americans through Taliban checkpoints and to the airport. Here's what President Biden said on Friday. We have no indication that they haven't been able to get in Kabul through the airport. We've made an agreement with the, with the Taliban thus far. They've allowed them to go through. But yesterday, the U.S. Embassy in Kabul issued this alert. Because of potential security threats outside the gates at the Kabul airport, we are advising U.S. citizens to avoid traveling to the airport unless you receive individual instructions from a U.S. government representative to do so. That, that alert directly contradicts what President Biden said just hours before on Friday. My question is, is that because the situation in getting to the airport, even for Americans, is more dangerous than the president indicated, or is it because of a reported new threat from ISIS? Chris, here's what we've, uh, we've seen uh, over the last week at the airport. Uh, crowds have massed at the gates outside the airport. It's an incredibly volatile situation. It's an incredibly fluid situation. We've seen wrenching images of people uh, hurt, uh, even, even killed, <laughs> that hit you in the gut. Um, and it's very important to make sure, to the best of our ability, because it's such a volatile situation, uh, that uh, we do something about the crowding at the gates of the airport. Uh, and that's what exactly what we're doing. First, the more we move people out of the airport who are already in, uh, the more we alleviate what has been overcrowding inside the airport, the more we can get people inside the airport and uh, reduce some of the crowding at the gates. But second and most important, we're in direct contact with Americans and others uh, to help guide them uh, to the airport, right place, right time, to get in uh, more safely and effectively. Uh, and at the same time, as we were talking about a few minutes ago, we now have in place agreements with, uh, as I said, more than two dozen countries uh, so that as we're moving people out of Kabul, uh, we're moving them to uh, uh, places where we can finish processing them, finish doing security checks, uh, and that, too, will make things run more smoothly. It'll get the flow uh, to a point where we hope and expect that some of these uh, scenes of, uh, of overcrowding, which are so dangerous, uh, can be alleviated. I want to pick up on another aspect of the evacuation. We know of one instance where the U.S. sent three Chinook helicopters out to a hotel near the airport to pick up 169 Americans and bring them back into the airport. Have there been other instances where the U.S. has gone outside the perimeter of Kabul airport to pick up Americans either in Kabul or around the country? And are we prepared to do more of that? Chris, uh, the, the President and Secretary of Defense have been very clear uh, that uh, we will uh, do what is necessary to get Americans who want to leave out of harm's way and get them home. Uh, and uh, that is uh, an ongoing effort. Uh, I'll leave it to the Secretary of Defense and others to speak to uh, how we would go about doing that. But our focus now, what the State Department is focused on, in very close coordination uh, with uh, the Department of Defense and all of our other uh, colleagues, is directing people with whom we're in direct contact uh, as to the best way to get to the airport, uh, get through the gates, get onto planes. That's the safest and most effective way to do it. In addition to the question of the security and the ease of Americans getting to the airport, the president on Friday said a, a, a few other things that were flat wrong, Mr. Secretary. Here he is on the threat from al-Qaeda. 
What interest do we have in Afghanistan at this point with Al Qaeda gone? But a UN report this summer says that Al Qaeda is present in 15 of the 34 provinces of Afghanistan. And General Milley said this summer that if the Taliban fell, that he was, or rather took over Kabul, that he was going to have to upgrade the terror threat from Al Qaeda. The president, what the president said just wasn't true. Chris, uh, step back for one second. First, as we, as we all know, we went to uh, Afghanistan 20 years ago uh, with one mission and one purpose in mind. And that was to deal with the folks who attacked us on 9-11, to bring bin Laden to justice, which we did a decade ago, and to diminish the capacity uh, of al-Qaeda to do the same thing again, to attack us from Afghanistan. And that, to the president's point, uh, has been uh, successful. Uh, we got bin Laden a decade but, ago. But and Mr. Secretary, the, the president, the, sir, the president Please. said al-Qaeda is gone. Simple question. Is al-Qaeda gone from, Pakistan, uh, from Afghanistan? Al-Qaeda's capacity uh, to do what it did on 9-11, to attack us, to attack our partners or allies uh, from Afghanistan, is vastly, vastly diminished. Is it gone? Are there, are there al-Qaeda uh, members and, uh, and remnants in Afghanistan? Yes, but what the president was referring to was its capacity to do what it did on 9-11, and that capacity has been very successfully diminished. Here's another statement that the president made that was flat wrong. Take a look. I have seen no question of our credibility from our allies around the world. I've got the exact opposite thing is we're acting with dispatch. We're acting, committing to what we said we would do. But Armin Laschet, the likely successor to German Chancellor Merkel, said this is the biggest debacle that NATO has seen since its foundation. And here is the chairman of the British Parliament's Foreign Affairs Committee. To see their commander in chief call into question the courage of men I fought with, to claim that they ran. It's shameful. Those who have never fought for the colors they fly should be careful about criticizing those who have. Mr. Secretary, does the president not know what's going on? This is an incredibly emotional time uh, for, for many of us, uh, and including allies and partners who've been shoulder to shoulder with us in Afghanistan for 20 years uh, at high cost to themselves as well as to us. They stood with us after 9-11, invoked Article 5 of NATO for the first time, an attack on one is an attack on all, and we've been there together. But I've got to tell you this, Chris, from the get-go, uh, I've spent more time with our NATO partners in Brussels virtually uh, from before the president made his decision to when he made his decision to every time since. We've been working very, very closely together. We've gotten the G7 together, NATO together, the UN Security Council together. We had 113 countries, thanks to our diplomacy, uh, put out a, a clear understanding. Uh, of the Taliban's requirements to let people sir, leave sir, the country. Sir, respectfully, that, that, look, I'm not, I'm not questioning whether or not the allies have a right to complain. I'm not mm. questioning whether or not al-Qaeda has a presence. The president said al-Qaeda al is gone. It's not gone. The president said he's not heard any criticism from the allies. There's been a lot of criticism from the allies. Words matter, and the words mm. of the president matter most. Chris, all I can tell you is what, what I've heard. And again, this is an, a powerfully emotional time for a lot of allies and partners, as it is for me, as it is for us. But I've also heard this. I've heard across the board deep appreciation and thanks from allies and partners for everything that we've done to get, bring our allies and partners out of harm's way. This has been a remarkable part of the effort. I've seen them stand up, step up uh, to, to help out, including, as I said, agreements with more than two dozen countries now uh, to help on transit. And beyond that, we're very focused together uh, on the way forward, uh, including the way forward in Afghanistan, and setting very clear expectations for the Taliban uh, right. in the days, weeks, and months ahead. I've got two more questions I want to ask you, Secretary Blinken. On July 13th, 23 staffers at the U.S. Embassy in Kabul sent you a memo saying that the collapse of Afghan forces and the takeover of the Taliban was going much faster than expected and urging you to speed up the evacuation of our Afghan allies, the drivers, the translators, the people who had stood by us. In the month between then and August 13th, we only evacuated 1,200 Afghan allies. 
Why didn't you move faster, sir? Uh, first, Chris, uh, the cable you're referring to came through something we call the descent channel, and it's something I take very, very seriously. This is a, a very important tradition that the State Department has. It's a very patriotic one. Uh, I read the cable uh, almost immediately. I responded to the cable uh, almost immediately. And we took to heart a number of recommendations that were made in the cable. I can't go into, into, into too much only, detail. But we only evacuated 1,200 Afghans in, in, in the next month. That doesn't sound like you took it that seriously. T two things here, Chris. First, uh, and this is important. When it comes to the Special Immigrant Visa Program, these are the folks who helped us, who stood, uh, stood with us, uh, translators, interpreters, et cetera, who we've committed to bringing out of Afghanistan if they want to leave. We inherited a program that was in a dead stall. Uh, no interviews had been done when we came into office uh, for visas for these, uh, for these folks uh, going back to March 2020. Now, largely that was due to COVID. We restarted the interview process. Uh, the president issued an executive order his second week in office uh, to look at the program to see how we could make it work better. We surged resources to the program, uh, assigned more personnel in Afghanistan, in Washington to make this work. We went from about 100 visas a week right. back in March to 800 uh, in July. We've issued about 5,000 all told. But here is the rub. Uh, and, I, and I acknowledge this. There is a difference between moving expeditiously to get this program uh, uh, off, uh, the, uh, you know, off the ground, off the dead stall that it was in, and get it moving. By the way, we cut processing time in half during this period, um, and that's exactly what we were doing. But, and we also instituted uh, uh, Operation Allies Refuge to make sure that we could lift people out, which was not part of the program to begin with. But uh, it, there's a difference between that and a full-on uh, evacuation. And because we believed uh, that the government was not, about, was not going to collapse, the military was not about to fade away uh, when it did, uh, we believed that we could do this uh, with, uh, in a very expedited I way, more resources, more effort, more people out, but that we would have time to do it effectively. I, and that brings us to my final question, which is the failure of both intelligence and planning. I want to play for you comments that President Biden made this week and that he made in July. Take a look, sir. The idea that somehow there's a way to have gotten out without chaos ensuing, I don't know how that happens. The likelihood there's going to be the Taliban overrunning everything and owning the whole country is highly unlikely. How does chaos go from highly unlikely to inevitable in just six weeks? And, and frankly, sir, what does that say about the competence of the president and all of you on his national security team? Chris, there's going to be plenty of time uh, to look back, to figure out um, who was saying what when, uh, what uh, should have happened differently. Uh, plenty of time for that. I've got to tell you right now, I am focused on one thing and one thing only, and that's the mission to get people out of Afghanistan, to get our people out, to get our partners out, to do it as uh, fast as we can, to do it as effectively as we can, to but do it you, as safely as we can. But you do realize respectfully, sir, that, and, and you're saying that, the Pentagon's saying that, the president's saying that, that's a way to avoid accountability now in the midst of this disaster. Chris, the, this is not about uh, avoiding accountability in our system, uh, thankfully. There is accountability. There always will be accountability. Uh, but there is a time and place uh, for everything. And the time and place uh, right now is this mission. And I'm seeing people around this country rally to it. I'm seeing allies and partners around the world rally to it. That's got to be our focus. And there, again, there's going to be plenty of time uh, to figure out exactly what happened, what might have been done differently, to learn the lessons uh, from, uh, from this chapter, uh, and to, uh, to take account of them. Secretary Blinken, thank you. Thanks for your time in the midst of everything you've got going on. And I very much appreciate and respect the fact that you're willing to answer all our tough questions, sir. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Good to be with you. Appreciate it.